Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. For this question, we're asked to prove by mathematical induction that the modulus of Z1 times Z2 times all the way up to Zn, that that is equal to the modulus of Z1 times the modulus of Z2 times all the way up to the modulus of Zn. So um, in this case, uh, Z is um, a complex number, so we're dealing with complex numbers here. So it's an interesting question because I think you probably could prove this without using induction, but it will be interesting to see how the technique of induction can actually allow us to um, prove this result. So it's just another avenue for um, showing that this result is true. So uh, what I'll do to start, I'll just start by writing out what we're asking to prove. So we're being asked to prove that the modulus of Z1 times Z2 times all the way up to Zn is equal to the modulus of Z1 times the modulus of Z2 times all the way up to the modulus of Zn. And that's where um, Z in this case um, is in the form, I'll just write it as alpha plus I beta. Basically a, a real number plus um, the complex number i times some beta. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Um, whilst we're dealing with complex numbers, the, the steps of induction still remain the same. So we, we start with our first step, where we show that it's true for um, n is equal to 1. So in this case, our left-hand side would become just z1, the modulus of z1. And our right-hand side would also be the modulus of Z1. So that's um, very straightforward to see that it's true for n is equal to 1. Um, then for step 2, we assume that it's true for n is equal to k. So I'll just write that out because um, what we assume to be true here hopefully will then um, become useful in step three. So what we're assuming is that Z1 times, the modulus of Z1 times Z2 times all the way up to Zk, we're assuming that that is equal to the modulus of Z1 times the modulus of Z2 times all the way up to the modulus of Zk. So we assume that to be true. And then the next step is to show that this equality is true for n is equal to k plus 1. And it's at this point that uh, we're going to write out this equality and essentially we pick either the left-hand side or the right-hand side and we hope that we can simplify to show that one is equal to the other. So in this case, our left-hand side would be equal to the modulus of z1 times z2 times zk times zk plus 1. That's our left-hand side. Our right-hand side would be equal to the modulus of z1 times the modulus of z2 times the modulus of zk times the modulus of zk plus 1. And you may have noticed here that what I did is I wrote the second last item in both the left-hand side and right-hand side. Um, even though we're going up to n is equal to k plus 1. Now the benefit of doing that, writing the last two items, is that hopefully you end up seeing something that you recognise from what you just assumed in step 2. So because I, in step 2 I assumed that the individual moduluses of z1 times z2 all the way up to zk, that that is equal to the modulus of all of them combined, I can now start to simplify my right-hand side. So my right-hand side then becomes the modulus of Z1 times Z2 times all the way up to Zk times the modulus of Zk plus 1. Now from there, I can then, oh, and I, I, I should specify that's from step 2. Now from this, I can then conclude that that is equal to the modulus of Z1 times Z2 times Zk times Zk plus 1. 
And the reason I can assume that is because I know the result, the modulus of x times y is equal to the modulus of x times the modulus of y. And that's true even where x and y are complex numbers. So that's a result that I'm taking as given in making this logical leap. But what I'll do is, after I finish this process of induction, I'll, I'll separately prove why this is true. Because it's a useful result to um, know and kind of have ready to make use of in proofs like this. So if you aren't familiar with it, it's worth taking the time to prove it so that you're comfortable being able to make use of it in um, other proofs that you may um, encounter. But once we get there, we can see that what we've just shown is equal to the left-hand side. Therefore, what we're trying to show is true for n is equal to k plus 1. So that just leaves our final step where we can say by induction, what we are trying to prove is true. The modulus of z1 times z2 times all the way up to zn is equal to the modulus of z1 times the modulus of z2 times the modulus of zn. So those are the steps of the induction. Um, in the grand scheme of proofs by induction, it's um, fairly straightforward, um, nothing too tricky in there. I think the key really was in um, deciding to expand the right-hand side and then simplify it in a format that gets us to the left-hand side. Uh, with all these induction proofs, you, you kind of are faced with the choice. Do you try and start from the left-hand side and get it into the format of the right-hand side? Or do you start with the right-hand side and get it into the format of the left-hand side? Normally, um, one is going to be more easier than the other. Uh, in theory, you can start from either side and you should be able to get to where you need to get to. But there's normally one that ends up being easier than the other. So what I find is if you're trying to do a proof by induction and you, for example, pick the left-hand side and you're kind of getting stuck, maybe what you can do is just stop and try starting instead from the right-hand side and see if you can then get to the left-hand side. That's kind of a, a helpful tip for thinking about induction. Um, so that's the proof by induction, but as I mentioned before, I do want to separately show um, this result, the modulus of x times y is equal to the modulus of x times the modulus of y, because we did rely on that to eventually get to where we were getting, uh, to, to the um, proof that we were trying to show. So it's an important result that um, I think is worth fleshing out. So what I might do is I'll um, come over the page and let's kind of break out what we're trying to show. So the modulus of x times y is equal to the modulus of x times the modulus of y, where x uh, is in the format of a complex number, so I'll just write that as a plus ib, and y is also a complex number, so I'll call that c plus id. Now, um, before I kind of jump into expanding on this and showing why it's true, um, it's helpful to uh, show an intermediate result that's going to become useful for us. So if for um, a complex number z, which I, uh, which I can define as alpha plus i beta, just a generic form of a complex number, if I plot that on an argand diagram, So on this diagram, we'll have our x-axis, which um, will be the real axis, and then we'll have our y-axis, which will be the imaginary axis. If I want to plot the complex number z, um, on the x-axis I'll have alpha, and on the y-axis I'll have beta, and then z plots at alpha and beta, so this is the point z, the complex number z. And um, if I go from the origin to the point Z, the length of that line is the modulus of Z. Now we know that the, the distance 
here the horizontal distance is alpha and the vertical distance is beta because that's how we've plotted the point Z. So using Pythagoras, what we can know is that the modulus of Z squared is equal to alpha squared plus beta squared by Pythagoras. So therefore, uh, we can see that the modulus of z is equal to the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared. And it was worth just taking a bit of time to flesh that out because that is a result that's going to help us um, in ultimately proving this result. So now, having shown that, we can, we can get on to the modulus of x times y, which will equal... I'll just insert the definition of x and y. So we'll go a plus ib times c plus id. So it's basically the modulus of those two things multiplying. So I'll just expand those out. So it's going to be the modulus of ac plus iad plus ibc plus i squared uh, bd. So all I've done there is just expanded each of the items. Um, that then, what I can do is I can go, that is the modulus of AC, and this I squared becomes negative one, so it will be minus BD plus I, and then I can factor the I and get AD plus BC. So that's kind of, if you notice, the format of a complex number where we have a real number plus i times another number. So it's really equal to the modulus of z where in this case alpha is equal to ac minus bd and beta is equal to ad plus bc. So hopefully that's clear. Um, now coming back to this result, the modulus of z in, in generic form is equal to the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared. In our case, we've got AC minus BD squared plus AD plus BC squared. Because all I've done there is take alpha and square it, and then beta and square it under the square root sign. So now let's expand um, that and see what we get. So we'll get um, a squared c squared minus 2 times um, the multiplication of each. So ac times bd is abcd plus b squared d squared. So that's that part expanded. Now I'll expand this part. So we'll get a squared d squared plus 2 times abcd plus b squared c squared. So that's the full expansion under the square root sign. Now these a, b, c, d's, they'll cancel. So we'll get the square root of, um, and I'll just bring things together to help with the factorizing, but we'll get a squared c squared plus a squared d squared plus b squared c squared plus b squared d squared. So I've taken each of these items and I've just written them in a helpful order because then it becomes quite clear how to factorize. So that will be equal to the square root of a squared c squared plus d squared plus b squared c squared plus d squared which will be equal to the square root of the c squared plus d squared we can factor and we'll get a squared plus b squared times c squared plus d squared which equals the square root of a squared plus b squared times the square root of c squared plus d squared. And as you can see, um, that is 
equal to, that's the same as the modulus of x times the modulus of y, because x and y are in this format a plus ib. So the modulus of x gets into this format square root of a squared plus b squared. And same with the modulus of y, square root of c squared plus d squared. So that gets us our result. The modulus of x times y is equal to the modulus of x times the modulus of y. And that is why we can rely on it when we're doing our induction formula. So if you encountered a question like this on an exam, you could just rely on this result. You wouldn't have to go about working through all these steps to prove it. You could take it as given. But I thought for this video it would be worthwhile just um, laying out that proof because it is such a handy thing to know and it's worth um, understanding in detail why it is the case. So um, that's it for that question. Hopefully that all made sense and you were able to follow along. Um, once again, it's worth reiterating that um, induction is really just about following the steps methodically. And um, the key is that when you get to step three, the real trick with induction is finding how you can make the linkage between what you assumed in step two and what you're trying to show in step three. And often that involves writing out the last two items and then looking for exactly what you've just assumed. Sometimes it helps to start from the right-hand side. Other times it can be the left-hand side. Um, there's no hard and fast rule. So it's just a matter of trying one, and if you get stuck, try the other. So um, there you have it, and uh, tick boom.